never been to Disney Springs, need to know what you should put on your must-try list, well, come with me, because we're going on an adventure. I am here at Disney Springs, and we're doing another walkthrough. We're going to see anything and everything there is here at Disney Springs, so you know what you should, uh, you know, put on your, I've got to try this list here at Disney Springs. Now, I have to be honest, I'm a little terrified, because I thought the Magic Kingdom walkthrough was going to be hard. I thought that was going to be a lot. And then, and then I did the prep work for this video, and I said, no. There's no way there's that many, if, but there are literally just, there's so much, strap in. Just strap in, that's all I'm gonna say. Disney Springs is Disney World's entertainment, shopping, and dining district, formerly known as Downtown Disney. A major renovation of the entire destination doubled the retail and restaurant options in, the, in this like, bustling area, and they now call it Disney Springs. Disney Springs is divided into four distinct neighborhoods. You've got the town center, the marketplace, the landing, and the west side. Here you'll find everything from chain restaurants and quick service snacks to elaborate table service menus. Today, I parked in the orange garage, which kind of dumps you out right here next to the Coca-Cola store and Planet Hollywood. There are three different garages where you can park. There's the orange garage, the lime garage, and occasionally the grapefruit garage, which is kind of far away. It's, it's, I don't, I don't like the grapefruit garage. Just, nah, it's too far. But why fruits? I'll never know. If you hang a right coming out of the orange garage, you'll immediately be greeted with the Coca-Cola store. If you've ever wanted to wear Coca-Cola merch because, you know, you just, you want to let people know you've got a, a love for the, the thirst of Coke and, and Fanta and Sprite, you know, Coca-Cola products, this is where you would get all of your Coca-Cola merch. Coca-Cola and Disney has had a long relationship. So it only makes sense that they have this giant dedication to Coca-Cola inside of Disney Springs. And every day at noon, a rooftop Coca-Cola bar opens up. Now up here at this Coca-Cola rooftop bar, you can try a bunch of different flavors from around the world. It's like a club cool, but bigger and, and rooftopier. That's a thing, right? Oh, there's a second little area up here as well. You get more Coca-Cola merch. And you can also meet the Coca-Cola polar bear. Across from this giant Coca-Cola store is the observatory, where you're gonna find Planet Hollywood. It's where you find your typical uh, Planet Hollywood food. Also, you know, Guy Fieri has some really interesting things in here at Planet Hollywood. You've got your burgers and your chicken. It's very, very uh, American style food here at Planet Hollywood. Also in Planet Hollywood, that's where you're going to find a bunch of movie memorabilia. Things from The Terminator, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, you know, so just like a super eclectic movie memorabilia. But underneath uh, the observatory, aka Planet Hollywood, is a fun little bar called Stargazers. This is where you can grab a quick drink. Now again, I am here pretty early in the morning, uh, so it is not open yet, but it does open uh, around uh, 4 o'clock for a happy hour, which you're not usually going to find a happy hour here on Disney property, so that's pretty cool. They, uh, they do have karaoke for, uh, on Wednesdays from 7 to 11, and live music on Friday and Saturdays. Very lounge act-esque, but uh, definitely a, a quick way just to grab a quick drink right before you're headed to your next uh, location. Now, as we keep traveling um, down this first little pathway between Planet Hollywood and the Coca-Cola store, it's where you're going to find your first restrooms. But within the uh, observatory orb, we'll call it, this is where you can find Chicken Guy. Now, Chicken Guy is probably uh, one of my favorite, like, just, like, easy, chill lunch spots. It's exactly what the name says. It's chicken, and it's Guy Fieri's chicken joint, if you will. You've got uh, awesome chicken, shakes, fries... But my favorite thing about it is that they have all of these different sauces. I'm a big chicken sauce dipper person, so I get as many sauces as I can. But they do have seating indoors and outdoors as well. Uh, there's usually a line to get in because it is pretty popular, it is pretty busy. And if you want to see something fun, Emma and I actually did like a taste test experiment here at Chicken Guy when we uh, battled it out with our top five uh, at Disney Springs, so go check out that video. Across the street from Chicken Guy is... Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill. 
They actually do have a little to-go bar right here where you can get specialty cocktails, slushy cocktails, as well as uh, gelato. But Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill is a table service restaurant. They've got this great wood-fired grill in there for pizzas and things like that. So definitely, uh, if you're looking for a nice table service bar and grill, Wolfgang Puck. And now we get to uh, what I like to call... It's really the outlet mall of Disney Springs. We're still in the town center, but this is where you're going to find all of your stores that you would find in a mall. Now, because these are stores that you can find uh, everywhere, basically, uh, for the most part, uh, we're just going to kind of just touch on them. We're not, we don't really need to go inside. I'll just give you a brief description. You know, just in case you're looking for some sportswear in the middle of Disney Springs, Columbia Sportswear. Tommy Bahama to find all, you, all, all those vacation shirts. You know what I'm talking about. Johnson & Murphy, Fit to Run, The Runner's Superstore. American Threads, Boutique, Dress Shop, Hug, you know, in case you want those furry boots. You've got good old Lily here. Sperry, in case you need some shoes while you're here. Vera Bradley, designer, oh, 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 then now they do have some designer Disney things here. Look at that. All right, Vera Bradley, Star Wars. Everything but water, where you can grab your swimwear, beach wear, beach covers, if you will. Sugar Boo and Company. This will have your little knickknacks. Sugar Boo, dealer in whimsy. <laughs> and it is currently closed, but during high capacity seasons, uh, they will have these fun little pop up stands where you can grab uh, beer or any, uh, beverages of sorts, just, you know, just as, as you're walking around Disney Springs. Because, you know, if you, so if you want to shop a little bit, it's important to have some liquid courage. As we continue on, you've got a free people. You can buy some great outfits, some hats, some shoes. Johnny was. What was he? Some place we can get some interesting dresses and uh, looks like carpets as well with just interesting patterns. Let's we move on over here to Kate Spade. We continue on this path to Joe Malone. If you're looking for some interesting fragrances, some cologne. Yeah, and in case you forgot your, your, your makeup back at home, come over here, here to Mac. Don't forget about Coach. Now, before we get too far down this path, right across from Coach is Zara. Zara is another fun clothing store. A little more high-end, if you will. It is two stories. Right between Joe Malone and Kate Spade, if you make your way down here, restrooms. But if you keep making your way down here, this is where you will be able to head to the bus loop. If you need to get to any resorts or any other parks, this is where you're gonna get on your bus. Now back that way where the restrooms are and the bus area is, if you have a, a service animal or anything like that and they need to relieve themselves, there is a, a animal relief zone that direction as well. But let's keep on making our way down this little path here. Luxury of Time by Diamonds International. This is where you can find your watches, your jewelry, some expensive stuff. What cost it? I don't think I've ever even been in here. What's in here? Seems to be a place like for the cool kids. You can buy things with gators on them. I, I mean, not actually, like, hats and cool sneakers. I don't know. Hey, but look, more makeup. Sephora, you know. But Mac and Sephora competing brands, I think. Okay. Need more makeup? <laughs> Good to go. Sure. Another clothing option. Looks, looks a little, kind of like a little boutique-y. Looks like more relaxing vacation wear a little bit. Stance. Ooh, look like they got some socks. Oh, they got some fun, like, branded things. Hmm, Stance feels like a less grungy hot topic. I'm here for it. And then super dry. This is kind of like an eclectic clothing area. You know, they've got jackets and t-shirts and backpacks. It's, it's very eclectic. But kind of cool. And you've got Love Pop. It's like paper art. That's fun. Yeah, cards that have like pop-up paper. Love pop. Ha, I get it. Hey, Ron John Surf Shop, you know, in case you wanna get your surfing gear here. Let's make our way back just a little bit on this little pathway. Under Armour, Fabletics. Yeah, I assume they're athletics that make you look fabulous. I'm sure, I, I think, I'm sure that's it, right? Athletic wear. Kendra Scott. I think I saw her on Shark Tank or something. Small town girl, big dreams, entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, definitely her. Uno de 50. Some jewelry here. Ever after, more jewelry here. 
Oh, this is where you can buy some like fun Disney jewelry, though. Cute and some bags. Love that. Wow, this again, just it's just very outlet Molly. You you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. But uh, we'll get to the we're, we're getting the Disney stuff. We'll get there. There is the Lime Garage. This is the uh, this is the other garage I told you about. This is actually the garage that I prefer to park in. I love the Lime Garage because you can go left to you know the Splitsville area, the right, the Cirque du Soleil plant at Hollywood, or you can go right. Uh, that's where you see your World of Disney, your Lego store, and right here in the middle, this is where all of your really really my favorite food and dining area locations are going to be. Speaking of dining locations, the Polite Pig. I know this is one of Emma's favorite restaurants uh, here in Disney Springs. Awesome barbecue, a great bourbon bar. She, that's not why she likes it. I like the bourbon bar. She likes the barbecue. And, you know, just in case you eat too much, there's some restrooms right down that little area. So you, you, you never know, just in case. But here at the Polite Pig, they've got great indoor seats as well as outdoor se seating. But if you want to see more about the Polite Pig, go check out our progressive dining at Disney Springs video where Emma and I, actually I surprised Emma with my favorite way to eat here at Disney Springs and that is progressive dining. Right next to the Polite Pig is Harley Davidson. I don't know a thing about motorcycles, but 30% off sweatshirts. I don't know how long that time I'll be out here for. Volcom. Sounds like a weird space thing, but it's not, it's clothes. And this is Levi's. You know, all your nice denim things. And Amaret's Patisserie. This is where you're gonna get all of your sweets and pastries and cakes. It's delicious. I actually had a cake here for the first time not too long ago. I'm not a huge sweets person, but I was holy moly surprised. I actually did have the Mickey Moose, which was this dome, and I was pleasantly surprised. I know that's controversial. Not a people, not a lot of people love it, but for someone who, like me, doesn't love a lot of sweets, I really did enjoy it. Right across from Amaret's Patisserie is the Daily Poutine, where, you know, you can get your Daily Poutine. A poutine is like a French fry gravy cheese curd mixture. It's really delicious, very heavy, <laughs> but uh, but if you, if you love poutine, it, it's a Canada delicacy, right? But you can also grab the occasional specialty cocktail. Like right now they have the Arendelle Aqua Punch. At this point, if we're going down the list, we've, had, we've, we've, we've had the bourbon and the barbecue. We've had the uh, Amaretz patisserie and the, and the poutine. It's, uh, it's time to go to the restroom. <laughs> right across from Amaretz patisserie is, is another restroom. You know, just in case you need it. Right now in the middle of this uh, area, right next to the poutine and uh, World of Disney, they have this cute little gelato cart. You can cookies and cream, chocolate, lemon, mint, chocolate chip, mango, strawberry, vanilla, and the flavor of the day. Ooh, all right. I'm interested. Right next to poutine, across from the Lego store as well, is the Uniqlo. Lots of clothes you can buy here. Uniqlo. This is actually where you can grab more of your just like artsy outfits. Different, interesting, lots of graphics, you know what I mean? You get your own printable t-shirts where you can, you know, put whatever you want on these t-shirts. That's kind of cool. Now, Uniqlo is also a two-story, so uh, more fun upstairs. We got a Lululemon. It's where you can find just, you know, your, your stretch pants, you know, your workout routine, or even just, you know, your comfortable wear. Nahoku. This is a, this is a Hawaii's finest jeweler. So Hawaii jewelry, interesting. Good old Edward, purveyor of fine eyewear. If you need your uh, fancy sunglasses, it's where you're gonna find it. Okay, now we're here and I'm not gonna lie, I've asked three different cast members or employees who, who work here and they all have pronounced it differently. So I'm just gonna show you the name instead. But inside this is where, uh, it's a lot of self-care stuff in here. You know, lotions, sugar scrubs, those kind of things. Ooh, rustic cuff. That's where you can find a bunch of bracelets. Francesca's. This is where you're gonna find some fun boutique outfits as well as like fun knickknacks and cups and like fun sayings. Alex and Ani. This is where you can buy a bunch of different charms and all these charms mean different things and you can uh, customize it uh, for different gifts for people. It's very fun. This is where you're gonna find your flip-flops, your sandals, your platform sandals. The relaxed footwear, if you will. <laughs> Pandora's, where you can find some bracelets, some fun jewelry, some fun charms. Over here we have sprinkles, a fun cupcake, cupcakery, if you will. Now you can't go inside and order cupcakes, but they do have this fun cupcake ATM. 
where you can order a cupcake. The, the door will automatically open. This cupcake will appear. It's magic. Frontera is a pretty cool um, Mexican eatery. They've got a really great tequila bar in the back. I've had the flautas here. The flautas are really, really good. It is not a huge restaurant, which means uh, they, they typically fill up pretty quickly on reservations. Now, right next to Frontera, this is very important. Uh, this is the Welcome Center. It's the guest relations. If you have any questions about your trip or Disney Springs or, or your resort or whatever, this is where you can find out all of the answers to your questions. Now, right next to the town center is Deluxe Burger, where you can grab your, well, burgers. Now, they do say that they have a signature blend patty, which is uh, uh, with beef, chuck, and brisket. I will vouch for them. Deluxe Burger is actually very, very good. I've had their bacon and blue burger, and it is very, very good. Super juicy, definitely better than a, a typical hamburger you would get anywhere else on property. Now, right next to the Help Center and Deluxe Burger, it's your Disney Ticket Center. This is actually where you can purchase any of your Disney tickets, whatever it may be. We are ending our town center adventure here at Blaze Pizza. You can build your own pizza here. You can also grab some signature pizzas. It's made to order pizza, which I love. That's awesome. They've also got some fun s'mores situations here as well. That's fun. Why am I exhausted? That was that was a lot. Okay, uh, no, we, we saw a lot. A lot of it was places that you would see at malls across America, right? Or outlet malls or whatever. Now it is time for a quiz. Hope you were paying attention. Guy Fieri has his hands in two of these restaurants. Which two is he uh, working with? If you said Chicken Guy and Planet Hollywood, you'd be correct. Good work. I am here at the marketplace. Now, if you're the easiest way to get to the marketplace is by parking in the Lime Garage, taking a right, and walking all the way to the World of Disney, which will drop you off right between World of Disney and the Lego store. Now, the Lego store is pretty cool. It, this is where you can purchase all of your Lego needs. You can also uh, experiment and try some stuff out here at these areas outside. <laughs> My favorite thing about the Lego store is that they always have these really cool, larger-than-life Lego pieces. Now, because this Lego store is not very large, there tends to be a line just to get in. But just be aware, if you're wanting to purchase something from the Lego store, that uh, there might be a little bit of a wait. Right next to the Lego store is the piece de resistance of the marketplace, the world of Disney. This is the largest Disney store where you can find pretty much anything you could want here. Now there are some things that aren't, uh, that are, that you probably find in the parks a little bit better that are more park specific, but this is your, you know, your generic Disney store where you're gonna find outfits and, oh, look at these onesies, that's cute. Fun fact about me, I actually really love onesies. There's so many things you can buy here from hats to outfits to toys to collectibles. But with that being said, because World of Disney is the place for all of those needs, there tends to be uh, a little bit of a crowd inside, as you can see. Sometimes there's even a line just to get into this store. That's how uh, in demand the world of Disney is. But the shopping world of Disney can, uh, you know, provide a little bit of uh, wear and tear. So uh, right outside of the world of Disney, like attached to it, is a Starbucks coffee for your caffeinated situation. What makes me laugh is, wait a minute, right across the way, Joffrey's. Just, just actually competing brands across the street. It's like West Side Story, but with coffee and mice because of Disney. You can grab some smoothies and uh, and some coffee as well. And then right next to that is Wetzel's Pretzels, where you can grab your pretzels, your uh, pretzel dogs, which are very good if you haven't had those before, your pretzel bites, your pepperoni pretzel bites. And this is the Waterside Stage presented by Advent Health. Now during the day they typically have this thing called Imagination Campus where uh, students like camps and stuff, they end up uh, being invited to perform on this stage for their parents or you know their family and friends. But at night, that's when it switches over, where you typically see a band or a DJ on the stage. It's a lot of fun. Definitely a family-friendly, but party atmosphere. And right next to the Waterside stage, presented by Advent Health, <laughs> I don't know why I have to drop my voice every time I say that, is Sunshine Churros, where you can grab your churros. What's cool here is that they actually do some fun gourmet churros. 
it's got a fun like twist to them as opposed to like a normal straight up and down churro. You got French toast churro, o Oreo churro. I mean, look at all these. Across from Sunshine Churros is Ghirardelli for all of your chocolatey needs. Oh, do I go inside or will I be too tempted to buy everything in the store? I'm not a huge sweet person, but I, I've got a weakness for some Ghirardelli. But inside, this is where you can also get some hot chocolate, some frozen hot chocolate, some uh, a, a quick shake. Really, during the holiday season, this is this place is bumping for uh, with some hot cocoa. Basin is where you're gonna find all of your soaps, your bath bombs, your salt scrubs, all your senses. Wild Jasmine, <laughs> you're right. She is wild. Ooh, pirate! What does a pirate villain smell like? Plunder and sail the seas in this villainous blend of pineapple, rum, coconut, and cilantro. <gasps> I'm super into it. Right next to Basin is Crystal Arts. This is where you're going to find all of your crystal arts. <laughs> I hate when I do that, but it, it's a lot of these names are on the nose. But Crystal Arts, it's, it's basically uh, crystal artwork. Now inside Crystal Arts... That's where you can also uh, have your own silhouette portrait done. And you can do that a couple different places on Disney property. And coming out of Crystal Arts, go down this little alleyway, this little pathway. This is the road less traveled. You're welcome. This is where you're going to find your Disney Photo Pass studio. And if, you're, if you want to see more about this in a little more detail, definitely check out our Disney Springs No Plan Day, where we actually just on a whim decided to come in here and get some fun photos taken. They also have a fun little stand out here where you can get some henna art and temporary tattoos in case that's what you're, uh, you're, you're wanting for your Disney Springs day, as well as a fun face painting area. One of my favorite places to go into is the Marketplace Co-op, and this is where you're gonna find, I would say, elevated, more park-centric things. For example, you're gonna find, you know, the vault collection here, the centerpiece, Disney Tales. These are fun, like, outfits for your dogs. I just think it's fun, eclectic. It reminds me, it is very a co-op marketplace where it's like each area is, like, owned by a different vendor. National Geographic recently came in. Disney's partnership with National Geographic is going pretty well, as well as Disney Tales, which is a pet collection. Get some, you can turn your pet into the hat box ghost. Well, that's adorable. And of course, they also have D-Tech On Demand. Now, they have this a couple places throughout Disney property, but this is where you can get grab phone cases, magic bands, customize them, and they're also made to order. You can personalize them. Across from the co-op marketplace is Marketplace Snacks. Now, over here, this is where you're going to find your uh, ice cream, your sundae. So you get your Mickey Cone Waffle Sundae, your Mini Sweet Strawberry Waffle Sundae. Marketplace Snacks actually has... Uh, Sundays based off of uh, the Fab Five. So you got a Mickey, a Minnie, a Goofy, a Donald, and a Pluto. And each one uh, has different ingredients and def def different fun uh, decorations to represent their character of the Fab Five. But right behind Marketplace Snacks is Dockside Margaritas. Now, if you're looking for a, a drink to go, uh, they are a full bar, but obviously their specialties are margaritas. I do love it because it is waterside, you've got the fountains, and they consistently have live music out here. You can either get some live music from the stage happening, the, uh, the waterside stage presented by Advent Health, over there. But also, they have this back bar that not a lot of people know about. And so you come to this back bar, you, you can also grab a drink to go here, but you can also, you know, take a seat and listen to some music. Now right next to the uh, Marketplace Co-op, is our, your DVC area where if you have any questions about the, your, the Disney Vacation Club, maybe you're looking to buy in, this would be the place to uh, come and ask some questions. Now technically, this is connected to the Marketplace Co-op, but uh, there is a separate entrance. It's trendy. And uh, get it where, where all the clothes are more trendy, I guess. It's your trendy Disney clothes. That's basically what it's trying to trying to tell you here. And even though they have an Alex and Ani store here at Disney Springs, they actually sell some Alex and Ani stuff here at Trendy as well. Some charms and bracelets. Look how cute this is. This is the Marketplace Train Express. It does have different operating hours uh, from day to day. Sunday to Thursday is from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday is from 10 a.m. to 11.30. The only sad part is adults aren't allowed in the engine or the caboose. Or, I mean, 
I'm disappointed anyway. All right, moving on. Right next to the Marketplace Train Express is the Pearl Factory. The Pearl Factory, Hawaii's original pearl in the oyster. The pearls are already uh, shucked from the oyster. They're already in necklace form and all this kind of thing. So if you're looking for some pearls, ah, look at this. Star Wars trading post. And this has all of your Star Wars needs. It is a smaller shop, but they've got Galaxy's Edge things in here. Classic Star Wars merch in here. They've even got some vintage Star Wars merch in here as well. Like the action figures. Wow. And you can also purchase the lightsaber hilt. Right outside the Star Wars trading post. Swings and things, the hammock experts. If you want to buy a hammock, uh, and, and you've always, you, you know, you're feeling you need more swinging in your life, just come to the outside of the uh, Star Wars outpost. This store is actually hilarious to me. Right outside of the Star Wars uh, uh, store, there is a store called Lefties, the left hand store. Uh, what's Shirts that make sure you are aware that you are, that, that it's cool to be left handed. Uh, they've got also some. Spoons that are made for left-handed people, some scissors that are made for left-handed people, some general equipment. <laughs> kind of awesome. Some pens. That, that's great. I love that. The Pin Traders. Welcome, Pin Traders. Pin Trading. This is where you're going to find all of your pin trading needs. So many pins here. Typically, when I tell people, hey, you know, you want to go look for pins, I say go to Disney Springs uh, and, and go to Pin Trading uh, in the marketplace because... It's just never ending. They've also got really great lanyards that you can't find a lot of other places. If you've ever wanted to get started in, into pin trading, I recommend getting one of these starter kits. Uh, I'm a huge villains guy, so I, I would start with the Disney villains uh, starter kit. But they've also got, you know, Lion King, things like that. Now, coming out of pin trading, you should see Once Upon a Toy directly across the way. And you guessed it. This is the toy factory, the toy shop. This is where you can find all your board games, your stuffed animals, your toy-related needs. But during the holidays, this is also where you can meet Santa. They do have Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. It is currently closed, but if Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique were open, this is where it would be. And this is where you would exit. But if you had a ride chair or you were trying to get your Uber or Lyft, you'd exit out here, go down this pathway, and if you can see over there, that's where taxis and Ubers and Lyfts, they would pick you up and drop you off. And there is another stairwell all the way up there that would lead you to the hotels or the other parking lots. And Earl of Sandwich. Now Earl of Sandwich does have outside seating and indoor seating. They actually do serve breakfast as well. They do have a, a fun holiday sandwich called the Holiday Turkey, which is basically Thanksgiving dinner on a sandwich. Everybody I know is just like, you've got to get the Holiday Turkey, it's the best. And you can actually place online orders and pick them up here in case you are on the move. Now coming out of Earl of Sandwich, Marketplace Carousel. Now it is not free and children under 42 inches must be accompanied by an adult. It takes one token to ride this ride. It's $3 for one token, $5 for two tokens, and $10 for four tokens. And right next to Earl of Sandwich is the Spice and Tea Exchange. This is where you're going to find all of your spices and tea. You're going to find your sugars, your peppers, your salts, your spices, your baking spices, your, your fine teas in case, you know, your throat's a little, throat's a little sore, like mine is right now. You need a, a nice tea to, to make you feel good as new again. Before we head to the next door, boom, bathrooms. All right. Anyway, this, this bathroom is connected to uh, the store that celebrates Christmas 365 days a year days of Christmas. This is where you're going to find all of your Christmas decorations, your ornaments, your stockings. The fun thing about me is I always, I love to get people the train, like the train that goes around their tree. It's just like such a fun, like holiday thing that I feel like more people should enjoy. So I'm like, here, take this train. Not only can you grab your ornaments here, but you can also customize ornaments. So you can uh, tell them what you want written on the ornaments. Yeah. You can place the order, then you can come back and pick it up either later that night or on a different day altogether. And here is another exit for rideshare if you're finding an Uber or a Lyft. Right next to Days of Christmas, you're looking for your Uber, 
come out here, hang a right, and head to the uh, stations where you can pick up uh, an Uber or a Lyft. And yes, more restrooms. Across from Days of Christmas is Wonderful World of Memories. This is where you can find your hats, and you can also get um, your Mickey hat embroidered here. Items available for embroidery. And I love some good Disney artwork. It's like one of my favorite things. Like well, this, I would buy this. A thousand percent I would buy this. There is nothing like some solid, fun Disney artwork, especially like classic artwork. Like these are super cute. Oh, I'm living for that. That's cute. <gasps> Maleficent, just getting ready. She's just like hanging out. And this one is for Quincy. Am I just picking out gifts now? It feels like it. Listen, here you go, Quincy. Love, love. What is, I want all of these. <gasps> oh, good Lord. Yes. Kitchen Cabaret. I'm spending way too much time in here, but most of this, all right, it's official. This whole video is now just gonna be me looking at artwork. Across from Days of Christmas and next to the Star Wars uh, trading post is the Art Corner. Now here's where you can find more art, but it is not Disney art per se. Right now they're doing a really cool thing on spin art, where you uh, put a couple things down there and then you ride the bike and you make it spin around really quick. And uh, it creates a really cool effect with the uh, paint that you created. Next to the yard corner is Goofy's Candy Company. In here, you can find all of your sweets and treats. Specifically more like, it's more like tacky treats, you know what I mean? Because it's Goofy. They got Goofy Glaciers, some fun flavors in there. Literally all of the candy you could ever want. But also some fresh candy, because they've got these little cases here that you can have your, you know, get your caramel apples, your Rice Krispie treats. It's like a tacky version of the Main Street Confectionery. Of course, they have these little stations where you can see them making the treats they're about to put in the case. Just tell me what you want and create your own. All items include coating and topping. So you can create your own here too, that's kind of fun. Also this way, if you go straight, that's, that will be your, where your rideshare pickup is. But if you make a left, there's the bridge to Saratoga Springs. And it's also your boat transportation if you want to uh, get on a boat and uh, head to your resort. Now these boats drop you off uh, here at Disney Springs, all the way at the back of Disney Springs, but it'll take you to a couple different resorts. It'll take you to uh, Disney Saratoga, uh, Old Key West, and Port Orleans. Now right before you make it to the bridge, you have Rainforest Cafe. I mean, what a structure this is. Before we go inside to Rainforest Cafe, Underneath it is the Lava Lounge. Because this is an active volcano, I mean, you gotta have a lounge for the lava to hang out at. You know? Now the Lava Lounge is basically an outdoor seating bar area. It's pretty, it's usually pretty empty, but obviously during peak seasons, uh, seats are a hot commodity. They still have the full menu that they have inside of Rainforest Cafe out here at the Lava Lounge. I really enjoy the Lava Lounge because it is waterside. I mean, it's the closest you can get to the water. Even even at a uh, boathouse, uh, you're still pretty elevated, but this is right, like literally right waterside. But, if, but we're gonna head inside the Rainforest Cafe. And before you even get to the actual seating restaurant area, there is a cute little gift shop inside here where you can uh, grab some fun toys. Tracy Tree. Why do you make me think of a, like a core memory? I don't know why. Oh, but she's she's looking around. All right, Tracy. I don't know why I remember you, but I do. Just now at the front of Rainforest Cafe, there is a bar that is open seating. Oh my God, you're one of those. <laughs> but here inside Rainforest Cafe, it simulates a real life rainforest and it has thunderstorms from time to time where the animals will create an immersive rainforest experience for you. Right across from that terrifying erupting volcano is swirls on the water. 
This is where you grab your Dole Whips, your soft serve. Cool stuff that makes you feel uh, sweet and tasty. You can do Dole Whip floats with alcohol. And it looks like you can even do a flight here. Yeah, the Dole Whip flight, that's, that's a must do. Just Plumeria's is a fun little shop, uh, it's like a little stand, I guess, uh, right uh, on the bridge where you can uh, grab this really unique, grow your own Hawaiian lei flowers. We've also got some fun tile work here as well. BB Wolf's Sausage Company, where you can grab hot dogs, beverages. They've got some really interesting hot dog choices. The Hawaiian Island dog, the three little pigs that, that is basically a hot dog cut up in three different ways and served three different ways. And I know Breed Love, plant-based bratwurst sausage on a pretzel roll. Oh, that sounds amazing. So uh, this is actually the last stop here at the marketplace is T-Rex, a prehistoric family adventure. Now T-Rex is very similar to Rainforest Cafe, except instead of rainforest and gorillas and Elephants, it's, well, you, you, you transported back in time. Where Dr. Seeker has transported us back in time again. Now, similarly to Rainforest Cafe, before you even get to the dining area, you're here at a gift shop. Now, I haven't seen a Build-A-Bear in a long time, but they still have this here, which is Build the Dino Experience by Build-A-Bear Workshop. Now, right away, if you hang to the left, this bar is available for open seating and it has the exact same menu as the rest of the restaurants. The Ice Cave, which is one of my favorite places to be. I will admit, it is not easy on the eyes. Your eyes do kind of have to adjust. Oh, restrooms. Your eyes do kind of have to adjust, but the color does change here in the Ice Cave. This simulates uh, the, when the, com the comets, the, the end of dinosaurs as we know it. Quiz time, here we go. Listen, I need your help. I need to customize a phone case, but also I need to buy my dog a costume. I need a customizable phone case and a dog costume, a Disney dog costume. Where should I go? If you said Marketplace Co-op, you would be correct. Good? We're, okay, we're, we're knocking down this list. We've got so much more to go. And we've made it to the landing. Starting first here with Pop Gallery. It's just a cute little pop-up stand, but it's where you're gonna find a bunch of uh, your fun, interesting uh, takes on different pop culture characters. You know, like you've got, you know, even things like Mario, the Labyrinth. I mean, uh, some Star Wars things in there as well. Yu-Gi-Oh, but <laughs> Elton John. It's very pop culture and just fun different takes on different styles of art. So Wonder Maid is a gourmet marshmallow stand where you can <laughs> literally buy these really bougie gourmet marshmallows that are cut up into different pieces and they have all these interesting flavors like uh waffles and syrup uh and there's even one with the, the bougie of bougie it's like 24 dollars why because it has 24 karat gold one of the most unique like buildings <laughs> is paddlefish uh, which is a seafood restaurant with one of my personal favorite rooftop bars i mean there is nothing like a little boat side cruise on the water here They've also got these great outdoor bars, especially for when it's cooler outside. You can sit right here on the water on this beautiful boat and uh, have a great seafood dinner. Look at the views here. Absolutely gorgeous and just stunning, just pretty. Now, Eye Catchers is a hanging art situation. Oh, that's actually really pretty. I love the Beauty and the Beast one. Right next to Paddlefish, the uh, seafood place, uh, there's uh, Terralina, which is uh, an Italian restaurant now, this is a little bit of the, you know, the finer dining kind of situation. It's the elevated experience. I definitely recommend the chicken parm sandwich. I know that sounds weird, but I had it here and it was pretty good. Chicken parm is the way that I determine it if I'm going to like this Italian restaurant, like any Italian restaurant. I go to a new Italian restaurant and I go, if the chicken parm is good, then I know I'm going to enjoy my experience here or I'm gonna definitely come back here. Does that make sense? So chicken parm is the test for that Italian place. If you're looking for a quick beverage or just to enjoy the beautiful weather, they do have this outdoor bar here at Terralina. And then there's the bakery. Aaron McKenna's Bakery NYC. So we're gonna grab your donuts, your cinnamon rolls, your cookies, crumb cakes, custom cakes and wedding cakes available for order get out. 
Fun fact, this is always vegan, always gluten-free uh, bakery. Uh, that's kind of their specialty to make sure everything is vegan and everything is, is gluten-free, which is pretty, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. This is Chapel Hats. This is like where you can find your, it's not just like normal hats. It's not like, you know, your random ball caps. I mean, this is very designer, high-end situation. Yeah, you can find some ball caps here. Dog mom, cat mom. This is where you're going to find your, your wide brim hats. Oh, this is like the mask. Yes, I'm living for it. These hats are always so intriguing to me. I'm like, you better just like live your best life. I think this is my new look. Welcome. And this is your flip-flop store almost, like your sandal flip-flop store. What's kind of cool about this place is that they're actually really great about like recycling. A part of the rubber left over from like their production, building these flip-flops, it is transformed into new products. They're all about sustainability, which is super cool. At long last, we finally get to the, one of my favorite places at Disney Springs, and it is the Boathouse. Well, it's, 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 it's part of the Boathouse, but I do love the Boathouse. Here's another great seafood restaurant. My preference over Paddlefish. Paddlefish might have some great views, but this definitely has better drinks and uh, better food as well as better service. There's more options in general. Now, I've had a couple things here, and they've, each one of them has been really good. The lobster tail is great. If you like oysters, they have a great oyster selection. In fact, they have an oyster bar inside of the boathouse. The real reason the boathouse is one of my absolute favorites is because of the dockside bar all the way back here. Look at, look at this. It is literally peaceful vibes out here. Another great thing about the dockside bar is that you've got a great view of the Amphicar launch. And for a pretty solid fee, <laughs> you can actually uh, get a tour in the water all around Disney Springs in one of these half car, half like boats. You can even upgrade it and do a champagne amphicar tour. It's really interesting uh, and I have not had the opportunity to do it just because it's kind of, kind of a lot of money and I'm here often. This definitely feels like a touristy thing to do. So if you are in the area and you're looking for something interesting and creative, maybe like a fun date night thing, definitely something to check out. But if you're a big nautical person, uh, not like me, but I'm, I'm, there's, no, there's nothing about me that screams boats. But right, right next to the boathouse is the boutique. This is the gift. This is the gift shop for all things boats. Woo! That is a salty captain. Why is he salty? The world may never know. Across from the boathouse is another Joffrey's. This is kind of like a brick and mortar Joffrey's, which you don't see often. Usually, you just see the pop-up stands around the parks. But it's nice to see a Joffrey's get like a little home of its own. And because they do have like a close relationship with Disney, oftentimes they'll do a fun Disney drink. For example, right now they have the Lion's Latte. And right next to Joffrey's is a gelato place. Vivoli. Yeah, in case, you're, in case you've got a hankering for uh, some gelato, they even have some alcoholic gelato, which is interesting. But obviously you have to be 21 enough to get that. Baked goods, cannolis, really some nice Italian treats in here. Apparently, the, the pistachio right now is uh, one of their favorites. Right between the boathouse and Jock Lindsay's bar, which we'll get to in a second, is this uh, kind of stage area. Uh, nightly, they have music here, uh, and it kind of rotates. Wine Bar George, like one of my, one, probably one of, one of my new surprise favorites, which I didn't anticipate on Loving, because you think of Wine Bar, I'm not a huge wine guy, uh, but they actually have some really great small plates uh, and some great cocktails. Now at Wine Bar George, you can pull up just the, uh, up to the bar and have a small plate. I recommend the Fire Saganaki, which is this lit, literal flaming cheese uh, and crostinis, and it's it's like with like it's lemon drizzled, and it's just absolutely disgustingly delicious. Like I I crave it now because it's so good. Attached to Wine Bar George is the basket. This is kind of where you're gonna kind of find all of your um, picnic needs, if you will. They've got wine, they've got meat, they've got cheese. Wine Bar George food to go. This is Raglan Road. Now they do have seating inside and outside and kind of all around the building actually. And they do have music nightly and uh, not just music, but uh, just entertainment, Irish entertainment nightly. Like right there on that stage in the middle of the room. So that way it's, you're fully immersed by all of the Irish culture and food and drink and entertainment. Hole in the Wall, which is the happy hour location of Raglan Road. It's an outdoor bar. It's still a full-service bar. You can get beer, 
uh, wine and liquor here. And they do happy hour, which happy hour isn't a common thing at Disney World in general. So having a, some happy hour experience at Disney Springs is definitely a must do. Then there's Cooks of Dublin, which is Cook's famous fish and chips. That's their big thing here, right? Fish and chips, family fresh, fine food, and hog in a box. I don't think I've ever slow roasted shoulder with baby potatoes, sage, and sweet onion stuffing. That's fun. But it sounds like this is where you're gonna get all your Irish fried food, but specifically the fish and chips. If you're gonna do anything here, I recommend it because it's pretty good and it's uh, pretty ridiculous. The hangar bar, which is Jock Lindsay's hangar bar to be precise. It's an Indiana Jones themed bar. Not a lot of people understand that. They're like, oh, it's, it's an airplane bar, but actually Jock Lindsay was a character in, in, in Indiana Jones. Now they do have some really great themed cocktails and uh, really what they offer for food is just kind of small plates. So you're not gonna get a lot of, you know, it's, it's not gonna be a full meal here. This is definitely the bar experience. It's really cool in here. One of my favorite things is this machine right here. If you order a specific drink that requires a ice sphere in your beverage, you'll actually see it get made right here. So the water will kind of cool into this little machine right there. It'll form the ice and then it'll drop down and then it actually makes its way all the way underground uh, and it appears somewhere over there. My favorite thing to do is to come here with a bunch of friends and to come sit in this like dive tank almost. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's just very fun. Lots of cool things happening here. But typically you'll find me outside here, probably at this outdoor bar because it's uh, always accessible. I've never really seen it too full unless it, you know, unless it's during the holiday times, which yeah, of course that can get pretty busy. And here you'll also get another cool shot of the Amphicars. And now the ever famous Gideon's Bakehouse. Now Gideon's Bakehouse is this kind of spooky, creepy, cookie emporium. There's usually a pretty solid, heavy theme inside all the Gideons. You definitely feel like the place uh, is haunted. Or it's, it's a collector of odd and strange things. But because these cookies are no joke, you can see the line here. The line can literally sometimes get up to a four hour wait just to get into Gideon's Bakehouse. On busier days, there is a virtual queue to get into it, so that way you can sign up, you can go do your thing, walk around Disney Springs, and then you'll get a text when, when it's your turn to come back and wait in this line. And Emma, Quincy, and I, we got a chance to actually try every single cookie at Gideon's, and we rated all of them. Right next to Gideon's is Oakley. We're getting back into like the, kind of the mall section, the outlet section, where you're gonna find things that you would find elsewhere. Next to Oakley is the Savannah Bee Company. Welcome to our hive, the best place to be. <laughs> they have an actual honey bar inside here, which is pretty interesting. Oh wow, that's a look in the literal hive. That's okay. It's a choice we're making now. That's funny. Can I try the hot honey as well? That's amazing. I'm so intrigued by it. Hot honey. That's so good. Whew, that's got a kick though at the end there. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a slow burn. It's like a slow burn. That's that sweetness, and then you get that. That's nice. Woo! The ganachery. This is where you're gonna find all your chocolate needs. I mean, and I'm talking about high-end chocolate needs, not just your your Hershey's Kisses. Nothing wrong with Hershey Kisses, but still. Oh, uh, they get the chocolate going, the chocolate fountain going. They're putting stuff through the chocolate. What I also love about the ganachery is that from time to time you'll find uh, like if there's a new Disney movie coming out or like um, sometimes they'll partner up with different Disney you know influences or celebs like Ashley Eckstein Ashley Eckstein had a Ahsoka Tano which is the character she plays in Star Wars uh, they had like they had a, an Ahsoka Tano kind of chocolate thing here at the ganachery which was very cool what they're doing it's a it's a recyclable like a sustainable uh, shoe making company where they make a lot make a lot of their shoes out of hemp instead of making instead of out of cotton which makes which I guess like helps farmers save water and it's better for the planet uh, but that's pretty cool a lot of sustainable shoes hap uh, happening here at Disney Springs that's super cool I talked to an awesome cast member named Jonathan and they actually have an actual like uh, shaving barber salon inside of the art of shaving. You know, if you need a shave, he said the only thing they don't have is a barbershop quartet. So, I mean, uh, Jonathan wins my vote on that one. Awesome cast members. Ah, the restrooms. Right, now, we were talking about fine dining earlier. This 
This is SDK, which is a steakhouse. It's open for lunch, brunch, dinner, happy hour, and even takeout. Everything from brave beef short rib to main lobster linguine. I had the sliders and a Manhattan here, and just the sliders and the Manhattan was like $50 just for those two things, just for myself. So it can get very pricey, but you do get what you pay for. It's, it's pretty fantastic food and um, definitely great for a fancy date night. Now, right across from uh, SDK, kind of catty corner, is Maria and Enzo's. Now they have two kind of like restaurants here. They have, uh, you know, kind of an easy pizzeria. This is where you can just grab a, you know, it's just a quick slice of pizza. But it gives off the old family classic Italian vibes. And it is just large slices of pizza, similar to what you would find I don't know, at the boardwalk or anything like that. Now what has always been interesting to me is Marie and Enzo's, their theming. Marie and Enzo's is also supposed to be like an airport? It's like an airport, like, it's an airport dining facility. All right, now let's head down to Enzo's Hideaway Tunnel Bar and Restaurant. You see the speakeasy vibe, you know, kind of, you see what I'm saying, where they would open up the little thing, password. <laughs> so you, you, you feel like you're just like walking into like this little wine area, but it's actually, they've turned this whole tunnel into a restaurant. The food inside of Enzo's Hideaway is a very traditional Italian restaurant. Lots of pasta, la burrata. I will say the vibes in there are beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Lots of attention to detail. It really feels like you are in this kind of hidden tunnel where everything is just out in the open. The meat, the wine. There's, there are no secrets anywhere because the whole thing is a secret. Does it make sense? Welcome to the Edison. It's like part steampunk, part like flapper girl era, 1920s. It's got these awesome old black and white movies uh, either coming through picture frames or just being projected on these like deteriorating brick walls to show that this is kind of this this place has been around for a while it has a very edison factory uh vibe but with a 1920s swing very postmodern jukebox there are three bars throughout this entire restaurant one upstairs and two downstairs oh restroom down here I knew it. Now I'm at the Edison, Enzo's hideaway. Yes, here we are. Yes. I knew Enzo's hideaway. I knew there was a room. <laughs> I knew it. Here's a secret passageway to, from Enzo's hideaway. Next to the Edison is Paradiso 37. I feel like it's been around for a long time. It has a, a South American vibe. It says, tour the taste of North, Central, and South America. It celebrates the Americas. That's, that's basically the entire vibe here. And what's awesome is that they have a social hour, which is the kind of their version of happy hour without actually calling it happy hour, because it's social. They want you to, uh, they're all about uh, celebrating together and, uh, you know, meeting new people. So they call it social hours. That way maybe you'll grab a drink and make a new friend. They do have some interesting entertainment out here from time to time, depending on need and capacity. Now, if you're looking for some great Asian-style cuisine, Morimoto, this would be the place to go. You can definitely grab sushi here, but it's not just sushi. It is high-end Asian cuisine. It definitely feels like this is a contemporary, elegant, Asian-style restaurant with an open kitchen layout, which, which we all love. When you get to see the food being made, to see the food being kind of like delivered, super cool. But if you're looking for a quick grab and go or something easier where you don't want to go inside and sit down, Morimoto Street Food is your quick grab. You can grab some ramen, edamame, or Morimoto Baby Ribs. Oh, that's, that's a solid choice. So the history of street food as part of popular culture dates as far back as the 14th century. It's estimated that more than 3 billion people eat street food every day. So the dishes represented on Morimoto's Asian street food menu are inspired by what is found at hawker centers and street food vendors throughout Asia. Right across from Morimoto's is Homecoming, Florida's Kitchen and Southern Shine. This is your sweet southern comfort food, baby, right from your mama's kitchen. I'm talking fried chicken. I'm talking macaroni and cheese. I'm talking collard greens, mashed potatoes. And their specialty, surprisingly, here is moonshine. They've got a lot of great moonshine cocktails if you're looking for, you know, if you're, if you're a moonshine fan. 
The thing that I re always recommend getting is get the chicken biscuits. Grab the chicken biscuits and the mac and cheese. It's not a super overwhelming plate. Like it's, a, oh, I'm never gonna be able to finish it. It's not gonna make you feel super heavy all day. It's tasty enough and light enough for you to continue on your tour of Disney Springs, whatever you're deciding to do for the rest of the day. Now, Homecoming does have a Southern brunch, Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., where you can find additional uh, menu items. But also attached to Homecoming is Shine Bar and Social, where, you guessed it, this is your Crafty Moonshine Resort cocktails. And this is a stand literally called Just Fun Socks. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's literally just a bunch of fun socks. I mean, warning, beware of dog. Flamingo. I, that's, this is cute. All right, quiz time. We finished the landing, quiz time. This is gonna be a hard one. Beverages are just a big part of Disney Springs in general. It's food, cocktails, shopping, that's the whole thing. Now at the landing, there are many bars, but we just, we went through a lot of them. How many outdoor bars were there? Can you, did you count them? How many outdoor bars were there just at the landing? Seven. Seven. Welcome to the West Side. Yes, I look different and it's a sunset. I wanted to come here later at night. I changed. I came here later at night because there's a lot of great things to see and do here in the evening time here at Disney Springs. I just got out of my Uber. Yes, I Ubered here because I'm going to have a drink. And there's a rideshare area right on the other side of Cirque du Soleil right here. So that's, I guess, stop number one, the rideshare area here west side next to Cirque du Soleil. Let's go. Right as you make your way through security here on the west side, after you get out of your Uber, your ride share, whatever your, your lift, whatever you're coming in on, you're going to see this giant circus tent. And it is in fact the home of Cirque du Soleil, which is currently housing Drawn to Life. Now, Drawn to Life is a Cirque du Soleil show. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Cirque du Soleil, it's a variety act show, circus style type acts. And it's inspired by Disney animation. It's the first really collaboration between Cirque du Soleil and Disney. Also inside the big circus tent is the Cirque du Soleil store. And this is where you grab all your Drawn to Life merch. Directly across from Cirque du Soleil is City Works, Eatery and Poor House. Now you might be familiar with this building because uh, you can kind of still see the remnants of the NBA experience. But City Works is a bar and grill, more or less. This is where you can grab your cocktails, your beer, grab some wings, some fried food, and then go inside and uh, watch whatever game is playing, whatever whatever your home team is doing. Did they win? Did they lose? They do have a bar inside and outside. It's actually the same bar, but it's all connected. That way, you have your you know you have your choice. Again, plenty of open seating here, and a lot of screens to watch whatever. Football, baseball, soccer, football, whatever you're feeling. Oh, someone just scored. I don't understand. I don't understand sports. I'm, I'm pretty sure I do like football, though, where David Beckham throws things around the diamond. <laughs> Love that guy. Right next to Cirque du Soleil and a, directly across from City Works is House of Blues. This is a restaurant, a bar, and a concert hall. Now, both inside and outside of the House of Blues, you can find interesting, fun decorations that pay tribute to, you know, different blues artists. It's kind of an eclectic style. They do have indoor and outdoor seating. Usually in the evening, you can always see some sort of live music playing out here. It's super chill, definitely a party atmosphere. This is where I'd want to go right before I was going to go see a big concert. Now, attached to the House of Blues is the Smokehouse. This is where you can get your barbecue kind of to go. You can also get some cocktails to go. That's right, Disney Springs is open container. You can walk around with your beverage as long as you are being safe and responsible. But this is where you can get your barbecue brisket sandwich, your jumbo footlong hot dog, smokehouse nachos. You can even grab your a souvenir House of Blues shaker. Oh, that looks dangerous and exciting, but mostly dangerous. And of course, the concert hall where oftentimes we have some pretty awesome artists come in here. I believe I saw, last time I was here, I saw Pentatonix, uh, who is an awesome acapella group. But Pentatonix was there. We've got awesome blues singers. A lot of cover artists will be there from time to time. The House of Blues merch store. Leading the way is the Blues Brothers. I'm a soul man. Oh my goodness. 
We have made our way all the way to the M&M store. Before you go into the M&M store, don't forget to uh, you know do a little photo op out here with your favorite red and yellow M&Ms. Welcome to the M&M store, where you're going to find all of your M&M merch. You got your cups. Oh, they've got merch for every M&M. Oh, that's cute. We got the red, the yellow, the green, the brown, the blue, and the nervous orange. I love it. I don't want to overwhelm you. You may cry. You may scream. You may be shocked. But I give you the giant M&M wall. Just so many different, again, they're all, oh, we got Skittles in here too. Oh, wow. Crispy, oh, the pretzel ones are the best. Yes. Across from the M&M store, you're gonna find Pepe. Pepe does offer hot and cold Spanish style sandwiches, gazpacho, salads, and sangria to go. That is definitely your, uh, your grab and go cuisine, which is always important at Disney Springs. It's Haleo by Jose Andreas. It's another Spanish style cuisine, but this is definitely more of a um, table service restaurant. Now inside to the left, you can just grab a seat at the bar if you're here just for a quick cocktail, but you can make a reservation for its uh, two-story experience. I always love that they have an open kind of kitchen area so you can see them prepare the uh, dishes and such. And at night, if the weather is perfect, they do have an outdoor balcony seating available right next to the water, which is beautiful. If dinner is not enough for you, you'd head right across the way to Splitsville Luxury Lanes. Before we even head inside, we'll start off with our outdoor bar here, where you can grab drinks to go, or you can just find a seat. Now the food here is kind of eclectic. This is where you can grab, you know, um, a, a pizza, a cheeseburger, but also they do have some Asian inspired things like sushi, chicken fried rice, as well as some taco bowls. It's very, very eclectic here. Now Splitsville is a two-story situation. Really on this first floor, that's where you're gonna find most of the, you know, if you're just here to eat, that's where you're gonna find the indoor seating, the bars. There are a couple lanes down here, but let's head upstairs to really uh, get, a, get this bowling situation into full effect. And here's where the real bowling party begins. You do have another full bar up here with a, actually a pretty fantastic view of Disney Springs. And they deliver full alcoholic drinks and full meals to your lane. If you need to kick your feet up for a little bit and maybe, you know, get lost in the world of cinema, they have a full AMC theater here, and it's actually giant. There are two sides to it. This is the first side. The west side, actually, this is where you're going to find kind of your typical movie theater experience. Uh, you know, your IMAX screens, your popcorn, your chicken fingers, like all those kind of like typical movie theater experiences. Second side, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Because it's that large, we have to go through like a full strip of stores before we even get there. So let's keep on traveling back here. Back here is Everglaze Donuts and Cold Brew. You guessed it. This is where you can get your glazed donuts and cold brew. Come here during the daytime because that's when you can see all these donuts being made. How it goes through the conveyor belt, how it all gets glazed. But well, they have a bunch of interesting kind of donuts. Things like the cinnamon roll, s'mores galore, Thai-licious, cinnamon toast crunch, you know, different things like that. But obviously your classic donuts like your classic glazed uh, strawberry iced sprinkles. They do have a small outdoor seating area as well as a couple seats inside but really this is the place to sit if you want to you know eat a donut in peace and if you parked in the orange garage and you don't want to walk all the way back to the coca-cola store this is this is your uh, kind of secret entrance and right next to the typical movie theater side of amc is salt and straw this is one of your ice cream shops here at Disney Springs, and obviously it is very popular. There is a line outside the door just to get in. And they've got some really interesting flavors, but they do have their classic flavors, and some of them are not what you would expect. For example, roasted pineapple coconut sherbet, uh, strawberry honey balsamic with black pepper, the salty donut guava and cheese. What? I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Uh, 
Arbequina Arb- olive. I'd, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I'm gonna have to try it, but I've still, I've got absolutely nothing. Pele Soccer. This is where you're gonna grab all your soccer merch. If you love soccer, come on in. The water's just fine. Sunglass Hut, right here, right after the soccer shop. Let's say you wanna buy yourself a nice pair of sunglasses because you forgot your nice pair of sunglasses and you're like, I wanna spend more money here. Go for it. I do love that they have these Ray-Ban and Disney partnerships. You can see that. One of my favorite shops, I don't know why, it's like a core memory for me for some reason, but Disney's Candy Cauldron. It's like the equivalent of Goofy's candy shop that's, you know, in the marketplace, but more villain-centric. And I think because it's smaller, like, this is it. It's just this. Because it's smaller, it immediately, like, the sense, like, the senses, meaning the smells, it just hits you like a ton of bricks. And you can see them making the uh, cookies and the caramel apples within there as well, so... Currently, right now, the food truck that's here is the Four Rivers Cantina. And this is kind of where you're going to find your tacos, your burrito bowls. Definitely a grab-and-go kind of situation, but still, like, look at this area. It's just kind of nice and relaxing. I like it. And over here, it's the local Green Orlando food truck. Everything here is pretty healthy for you, but it's also tasty. Eating well isn't just about fresh, healthy foods. For us, the community is the key ingredient. I love that. Eat well, be well is the slogan. I love that. That's awesome. Right next to Candy Cauldron is Marvel Superhero Headquarters. And if you're a Marvel fan, just like I am, this is the place to be. We're talking Marvel outfits, Marvel props, Marvel mugs. Try to snap. I don't know how to snap in this. It's not. I've snapped and... The world is safe. You're welcome. Now, right next to the Starbucks, uh, that's where you're going to find your restrooms. Now, the men is on this side and the women is literally directly on the back side of this. Uh, but just, just in case you need a bathroom break, found it. Nailed it. Ah, home sweet home. It's the Star Wars Galactic Outpost where, I'm not going to lie, recently I just bought the Ashley Eckstein, like... Guiding the Light series. Oh, here it is. I don't have the sweatshirt I bought, but that's definitely... Those are definitely the, the pants that I bought. You've got everything from clothing to toys to collectibles. I'm a Jedi. Am I? I don't know. And across the way, it's the promised land. <laughs> it's Starbucks. Just in case you want your morning pick-me-up, your afternoon pick me up or your evening pick me up it's it's doable but it is right here almost literally in the heart of west side and over here is disney style right next to star wars galactic outpost across from starbucks this is actually one of my favorite like places just to peek into the clothing here could literally range from stylish to gaudy and nothing in between <laughs> Sometimes they're cute. Like, you hear me out. Like, that's just like, that's a choice you'd be making, right? This is kind of cute. See, there's gaudy and cute and nothing in between. 40 bucks right now. Breed Love would wear this shirt. Just saying that out loud. 40 bucks right now. That is, I need to, that, that is a Breed Love shirt. Now, as we exit out of Disney style, you make, you, you bang a hard right. And that's when you come across the other side of AMC. Now, this is where things get interesting. These are your full dine-in theaters. So basically what you're going to do is <laughs> there's like a number of seats. Like you have to reserve a seat. Then you're going to get in there. You're going to get you're going to get sat in these like recliner chairs and they're going to bring you to full menu. They're going to bring it right to your seat at the at the uh, inside the movie theater. You can also order full cocktails at your movie theater. It's uh, one of my favorite things. However, it can get a little pricey. But uh, it is glamorous if you think about it. Now, actually, the bar inside of AMC is called MacGuffins. But in order to attend MacGuffins, you have to buy a movie ticket. Right across from AMC and pretty much right next to Planet Hollywood is Yisaki by Mitsukoshi. Now, Mitsukoshi is the 
Uh, if you're familiar with that name, it's the store that's in the Japan Pavilion at Epcot. And this is where you can find your Violet Sake, your Osaka Sunset, some really interesting uh, sake drinks. You can even get some bowls if you're interested. Also kind of in this central location is a, a, a repeat of what's in the marketplace just because you can never have one too many Wetzel's pretzels, but it's Wetzel's pretzels, pretzel bites, your Wetzel bites, excuse me, original pretzels, Wetzel's dogs, pepperoni twists, you know, finally Hagen does, you know, ice cream place, you, you get it, you, you, ice cream. And finally, the world leader in balloon flight, the aerophile. So you and a bunch of guests at any time of day, whether it be daytime or nighttime, we put in this giant hot air balloon and flown high above Disney Springs. If you, if you want to do this, definitely check the weather. Make sure the, the flight time, the, the, the flight is ideal. The flight circumstances are ideal. And that is the west side, which means it's finally time for a quiz. It's official. It's my time for a night on the town, but I'm pretty sure I'm looking to strike out. Where am I going to go? If you said Splitsville, you are correct. Wow, there is so much to do at Disney Springs and there are just so many incredible options. Again, food, beverage, activities, shopping. I mean, it's all here. So when you're planning your next trip to Walt Disney World, make sure you have your must-dos. Go up with a little bit of a game plan, but also be prepared to surprise yourself because, you know, it, it's all about spontaneity from time to time. Is this intriguing to you? Why not? Give it a shot. Try something new. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch Emma's complete tour of Epcot. Bye.